The exhibition uh, Variations on a Landscape was initially conceived a while ago because we wanted to do an exhibition that used the sunlight. So the time of the opening was moved to the summer solstice. I wanted to work with the sunlight in the gallery space, given that it's called a Clara story based on a model of a church. So we removed all the light fixtures and covered the glass ceiling with a pink gel that's called pink flamingo. And the gallery was flooded with this pink light that altered throughout the day. The exhibition consists of a circular fountain that partially blocks the Clara story, had a small spout that trickled water, which had a really significant effect given the sound of the fountain. So people were more apt to gravitate towards the fountain, which was designed in a way that you can actually sit on the edge of the fountain. Two other elements in the gallery were a paper towel dispenser and two sculptures that were one consisted of two swans that had been entangled together. This was cut with CNC out of pressurized styrofoam and uh, the swans are in a kind of a tangle that is indecipherable as to whether they're mating or wrestling or kind of in a kind of a collapsed pose. And then there's another third swan that is on the opposite side of the fountain and it sits alone with its head under the water. The two swans that are entangled were inspired by a video from YouTube where two swans that had been fighting or mating, I can't tell, approach a total stranger to unentangle them essentially. And there's a scene where while he, this person is un unentangling them, they're both in this kind of a fine balance where you can't tell who has the upper hand. The show had two phases. The second phase opened during the autumn equinox. And basically, because we removed all the light fixtures in the gallery, in the autumn, as the light was less prominent, as the sun would set earlier and the direction of the sun was different, I wanted to introduce another element of light into the space, but not a decorative light, but something that had its own inherent lighting system. So the three swans were removed and replaced with three screens. The screens are where the swans used to sit. The paper towel dispenser was taken out. The fountain had been drained to minimum amount of water and I made a kind of a tarp wrapping of what looked like a formless figure in the center of the fountain as though you see them often in these kinds of neighborhoods as though there was a water feature that's being or like a fountain feature that's being protected for the coming of winter. And finally there was a small branch or like a kind of a tree stick or a piece of a root of a tree that was put into the space with the illusion that it was kind of going into the floor. So it functioned in a way that made the floor look like maybe like water or that it was a kind of a foot trap. The way when you're walking in a forest, a root will kind of gradually come out of the ground and then it feels like kind of a setup to trip on something. And then finally, on those pristine gallery walls, which had nothing on them, we installed a plug and in the plug was an iPhone charger. Those were also forms of trappings, like providing a, an iPhone charger was a way to kind of either make it feel like somebody left their iPhone charger there or that you are invited to use the iPhone charger. And that would become a form of trapping people to stay into the space. And the three monitors that replaced the swans all played a looped video of a green screen. So once the sun was setting earlier throughout the autumn and early winter, the gallery became instead of pink, gradually became green. And the effect of it was that the more you looked at the green, the more prominent the pink looked, and the more you looked at the pink, the more prominent the green looked. But also the TVs kind of cast this shadow. So when you were standing in front of a screen, your shadow would be dark pink while the wall was green. So this kind of color illusions and enhancements were part of the show. To bring language into this exhibition, but not mine, I decided to work with six writers and I asked each of them to contribute a piece of text that they had kind of a carte blanche on and the only premise was that the writers would keep the word fountain in mind but there was no stipulations about length or format or content. Each text was introduced into the show every month and when the text was brought in as a kind of a spreadsheet the previous text was removed. So there was a kind of an incentive for people to come to the gallery pick up the new text and read it and they had a kind of a one month window to get your hands on this text. And I found that experience to be incredibly fruitful as there were some things that I had about, I had in mind about the exhibition that I was never vocal with, but they kind of in this 
strange way, despite me not telling the writers what I was doing, the ideas percolated or were provoked into the space through the text works.